This is That Video Game Podcast, episode 573 for October 15th, 2018. Full set of oranges. Gear and fruit, both good for your health. Welcome back to another episode of That Video Game Podcast. I'm your host, Boston. Joining me as always is Moon Pier. Hello. A quick piece of programming news here at the beginning. Uh, The first proper episode of We Rogue Like It will be coming out for patrons this Wednesday. Um, So check your audio feed or your email or however it goes. If If you're a patron and you get audio rewards... Uh, don't forget to go subscribe to your RSS personal feed. RSS feed. Yeah. yeah, it'll just go in your podcatcher. It's, you know, look at the show, and it's um, up in the upper left-hand corner. Um, for the record, and, that's and, on the main Patreon website, not on the Patreon app. The app doesn't work that yes. way. Because the app you just is don't use the, the app. It's, it's bad. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so go check that out. Um, and uh, if anyone's not a patron, uh, it will be showing up one week later for you in the free feed. If you want to be a patron, patreon.com slash E1M1, the ones are numbers. Get a whole bunch of cool stuff. Let's get right into the show. Moonpeer, what have you been playing this past week? Oh, well, I'm going to talk really quick about two games and then talk for a lot longer about two other games. Okay. Okay. You already, spoiler alert, go back and listen to last week's show. You know these games. Uh, So... Uh, first one I'm going to talk about, 2064 Read Only Memories. It's this month's Game Club game. Uh, tune in next Saturday for the uh, live version of that recording. Yep. I have never been a point-and-click fan. We okay. will see during next Saturday's uh, show what my thoughts are. No spoilers here. It's. I'm about halfway through that game now. How many chapters are there? Because I just Six. finished chapter two. Yeah. But then Six. I also did get the achievement for drinking every drink in the bar. Oh, nice. Well, that's a lot of drinks. Yeah. It's two, like, a full letter-sized piece of paper. In half, both sides were a list of drinks. Jeez. One of the drinks is called the PT. (laughs) The the, the description for that is literally nobody knows what it is. It's almost like it's not really there for anything. (laughs) That's really good. Really, really good reference. Yep. And there are a whole bunch of them throughout the course of the game so far. So... Yeah. It's really cool. Spoiler alert. We'll see. Yeah. Uh, so so far, really cool. Yes, so far. Uh, I'm very impressed with the voice acting, which obviously wouldn't have taken taken place in modern day. Uh, oh, not modern day. In old school point and click games, it probably would have been a lot harder. Um, yeah, I, I ran across both Jim Sterling and Dan Reichert's characters. I don't know if I've met Dan yet. I saw Jim's. He's in the bar. He's a, in the background where you're talking to Jess. Um, he's in the background. He's a green, green person, like totally green body with like a shock or black lock shorts or something on. like that. He, something like that. Yeah, that's Dan. He has like one line. Ugh. Okay. <laughs> so far, I knew Jim immediately, and that is really weird. It's like, yeah, because he's not. He's not the Jim Sterling character. No, he is not aggressively yelling about microtransactions. <laughs> right. So to hear him being like, oh, hello, how are you doing this fine day? I'm like, I'm sorry, what? Yes. And then to be like, these are the viewpoints we hold and we believe in a peaceful protest. It's like, no, you right. don't. Have you met Who yourself? Are you? Yeah, I, I was really happy with his um, his voice acting. I, I thought, I'm, I'm actually, so far, I think all the voice acting is really solid. Um, I don't really recognize anybody. I know they're all famous people. Um, I did not know that. Yeah, there's a there's one trailer they put out w- about the voice actors where it's like, here's this person, like the um, the guy who does the narration at the very beginning, like in the future. That's Pro ZD, the guy who makes the really short, um, funny videos on YouTube about video games. Okay. Um, you you'd know him if you see him. Oh, probably. Um, but uh. I've only run in, ran into one person that just the audio quality was bad, um, and so far it's all been really good. Yeah, it, 
I think I might have bumped into the bad audio quality person as well. Uh, but because he's in the park, yes, like in the background, because it's you talk to him, he's like, "Hello!" Like off in the distance. <laughs> yeah, it's one of those things where it's like that feels like it was recorded on the receiving end of a Skype conversation. Yeah, exactly. Not on the home end of a Skype conversation. I do have to say though, the the most important voice in the game is Turing, the the person you're the, yes. the robot you're with. His. His or her voice is really, really outstanding. Yes, I go with her for that one. Um, mm. Speaking of, I could not help but be weirded out when I bumped into the... Uh, I recently finished um, Tales from the Borderlands. Mm -hmm. Really weird playing a different Telltale game just after that. I wish I can't even remember what game it was, but hearing the robot's voice coming out of a human's mouth. Oh, right. Really weird. <laughs> yeah, really weird. But no, it's you know we'll get into a much deeper dive on it in, on Saturday. But twenty sixty four, I now ha I left myself two weeks to complete the game, and then spent an hour and a half today just getting smashed. So, right. <laughs> well, and I think it's I think it's still on uh, one of the PlayStation Plus free games for this month too. Uh, it's for Vita, but it's cross play. Yeah, or cross de cross by whatever whatever they call it. You can have it on your PS4. Uh, fun fact about that on the Xbox, it has 64 achievements. Hi, hilarious. I went to go see how much it costs on um, the Switch, because I was thinking, oh, maybe I'll play it on there. $20.64. You know <laughs> like, what the worst thing is? I think it might have been $20.64 for me as well, because I, I bought it. I saw yeah. 20 I don't know if it was 20 64 yeah, it's one of those things where it's like, uh, okay, we're we're stretching this theme a little bit, but I, I can still appreciate it. The funny thing is it's still a thousand gamers go, but it's literally 64 achievements. Right. Man. Should I get 20 and then just stop? <laughs> yeah, so exactly. 20 out of 64. 20 out of 64. <laughs> oh. uh, uh, okay, I uh, did start Hand of Fate again. Uh, spoilers mm -hmm. for a different show. Go and listen to the upcoming episode of... Uh, we rogue like it. Information yep. earlier in the show. Right. Uh, so uh, let's talk about the two games. The uh -huh. two games. We'll do it the same order we did it last week because it's a good transitional okay. game again. I like my transitional games. So we'll start again with Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Yes. Um, this is going to be really bad and kind of show-breaking. Oh, wife, if you're watching, can you please turn on my Xbox and tell me how long I've been playing Assassin's Creed Odyssey for? Thank you very much. <laughs> so, yeah, I've put a fair few hours into Assassin's Creed Odyssey so far. I've mm. unlocked two of the main three storylines. Oh, okay. Because there is basically three primary quests, from what I understand, in this game. Two of them are kind of interlinked. Uh, minor spoilers for those that maybe haven't started at home. How many of the 44 have you hunted down? I've hunted around about six. Okay, cool. Two by that, accident. I read that. That's And that was the stuff you were talking about last week with the uh, sort of like Shadow of Mordor system? Nope. Oh, okay. Well, I that's was reading more like that. the Deck of 52 system from Mercenaries. Yeah. I was reading that, and I was like, oh, no, another reason to buy and play this game. It sounds so good. I really want to play it. Mm -hmm. It's really cool. And the fact that yeah. they give you hints and you have to basically investigate your way up the tree is right. really fantastic. So, yeah, there is a lot going on in this game. And mm. something that I, I made a note here, literally it says... Remember to talk about mission design, you idiot, because it's something I forgot to talk about last week. <laughs> I'm glad you leave the same notes to yourself as I do to myself, where it's like, hey, stupid, yes. you forgot to talk about this again. Yep. So, when you start the game, it gives you difficulty levels, difficulty options, whatever, and it gives you a gameplay style. Okay. The, the one it recommends is discovery style. So what that basically means is when you talk to somebody, you have, I think we discussed it last week, you have the conversation trees now where it's like mm -hmm. you can talk to someone, get more information, so on and so forth. So in doing so, when you accept a quest, like let's say, oh, here's a randomly generated quest. Some bandit stole my gold. Where? Mm. Sorry. Some bandit stole my drachme. <laughs> I need you to. Is it? Uh 
Is it sort of like those quests that the um, in Origins that that traitor kid would give you, where it's like, go do this thing, and it's like, okay, I just need to go to this area and kill this one dude. Similar to that, yes, but they are randomly generated. It feels like all the time. I currently okay. have like forty three quests in my quest log. Holy poops! There is five related to the Odyssey. There is. 10 related to the 44 mm-hmm. and then there is all the rest of them are side quests like power play naval quests go kill a bunch oh, of okay. sharks because one killed my son kind of thing i don't know <clears throat> but enact sharky revenge yes but when what happens when you get to say you go to speak to some beggar and he's like these soldiers all stole my gold mm-hmm um, then you'll say, okay, do you want me to kill them or get the gold back? And he's like, do both, whatever, kind of thing. Right. In discovery mode, what they will do is they will say to you, okay, where, which direction did they head? You can, mm. add, like, in the conversation trees, you can ask, like, which direction did they go? What's nearby? And then okay. you have to then go into your map and it'll be like, it'll come up in the top left. Won't give you a destination, it'll say... The bandits headed west over the mountains. They're known for hiding in a cave. So then you've got okay. to pull up your map and then look at the mountain region you're in. And then if you you can then try and find caves that you've discovered via the question mark system, same as Origins. Gotcha. You can try and find a cave that might be in roughly the right area. And if you've already discovered it, sometimes it'll just say underneath, it's like, yeah, they're in this fort or yeah, they're in this cave. Right. So then you've got to go to that location. But it's really cool way of actually pushing you out a little bit to actually explore the wider world. Right, instead of saying, like, putting a big red arrow on the map, where it's like, they're right here. Yeah, exactly. It's yeah. kind of a, a more exploration method, and I actually genuinely appreciate it. I think it mm-hmm. does a really good job of letting you see so much more of the world. Uh, things I things I learned about it, the previous areas you've been to, it will keep them at two levels below you. Oh, interesting. To always have a challenge in that area, so... I can't go back to the starting area, which was ranked level 7. Mm-hmm. If I go back there, it's now level 22, because I'm now like level 24. Right. So the, if I go back there and take part in the power play, the political struggles, that kind of thing, it's still going to be a challenge for me. Interesting. Interestingly <clears throat> done, kind of annoying that I can't go back there and just one-shot everybody in that area. Yeah. But I get it. Yeah. Especially when you're considering you do have quests where it's like, go and kill these many Arthenian leaders or these many Spartan leaders. And it's like, well, okay, I'll go to the area that's level five and just kill everybody and then problem solved. <laughs> yeah. It does have to maintain some challenge and I'm fine with it. A little disappointed, but other than understandably fine with it. I've done a whole bunch of ship stuff now. Ooh, nice. I've done a whole bunch of running around islands. And I have encountered my first precursor mission. Ooh, okay. See, I knew that would get the ooh from you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, which I don't know if they rebranded them in Origins, but they are referred to as the Isu now. But I can't remember if that was in Origins or not. I feel like they might have dropped that once or twice. Yeah, possibly. Mm. Oh, my wife in chat points out my Odyssey save is 22 hours. Yeah. That's that's pretty good. Mm-hmm. And you're still scratching the surface. Not even that. I feel like I'm holding it before I've started scratching it at this moment on this pen, right. particular penny. Uh, but I've done my first ESU mission. I have come back out of the Animus. I have been introduced to the world at large again. Great. It is Layla, who Great. It, well, um, was the previous person. There is, a, there is a laptop. You can read through a bunch of emails. You can read through a bunch of <sighs> stuff like that. Even better. There is a whole bunch of information on the table for you to read into. Oh, yeah. Information on your current team. Some mission, which I don't think is referenced at all in any of the Assassin's Creed games, but there is a mission that went really, 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 really south for the Assassin's. Oh, interesting. So people are dead now, and I Hmm. can't remember if I've met those people before. (laughs) Oh, right, right. So, uh, it could have been somebody from some of the spin-off games, too. It could have been, yeah. And they also specifically make reference to the tales of Assassin's Creed games. And mm, yeah. the side-scrolling ones. 
Yeah, Russia, China, India? Yep, I'm pretty sure the Russian one is called out in the oh, intro wow. sequence to this. It's just, man, there's so much stuff in this game and so much information, and it's all great, and I kind of don't want to be here. I kind of want to go back downstairs and play it. <laughs> It's the best problem to have. Yeah, but it's also the worst problem because I've also got to play Hollow Knight and 2064 yeah. and Hand of Fate and Horizon. And <laughs> if anybody has a time turner, I would be greatly appreciative of that. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah. Yeah, Assassin's Creed Odyssey is really, really great. And I'm, having, I'm bumping up against some rough edges. The... Crafting materials feels a little stringent. Oh, okay. It, like it feels like you're always just shy of what you need to fully deck yourself out. I'm level twenty two and I'm make crafting item trying to bring the gold items up to my level. I can't mm. do it with all of them, so I'm wearing like level eighteen helmet and level sixteen boots because there's, well, I don't have the materials for this. Oh, okay. But then guess what? You do a bunch of side quests for materials and then, oh no, look, now you're level 24 and now it costs twice as much to level these <laughs> off. Ah, crap. Yes. I want my full set of oranges. I will yeah. have my full set of oranges. Right. That is the way it will go. But I'm not complaining. Uh, my wife did just point out in chat a interesting moment and the m <laughs> let's Shall we call this episode one of Into the Mind of a Sociopath? Okay. Where my wife had a thirsty Cassandra moment with someone who mm -hmm. she was friends with. Got into a fight with that person as the result of a storyline. Killed said person as a result of the storyline. And then literally threw their body into a volcano. Great. There's some real Tekken stuff up in here. Yes. So now I'm expecting a devil friend to come back and right. start killing everybody instead. As some sort of lava monster? Yes, exactly. Yeah. So this, this game is insane. Yeah. Genuinely insane. I, I'm, I'm glad that they took the Origins formula and built upon it in interesting ways without just putting another Origins out. Because they could have just said hey, it's about the same as two new people there are dialogue trees now. And that was really it. But to have them add even more stuff on top of that is is pretty incredible after you know, just a year after Odyssey. Obviously they're not it didn't take them just a year to put out to make um, Odyssey, but just a year after Origins is pretty crazy. Yeah, I, the thing for me with this is it's it's very it's hard to to phrase this in as a positive, but there is too much to do in this game, yeah. and that is the criticism coming from reviewers. That is the criticism coming from from me. I I will say it myself. It feels like this game is so huge. Yeah. That isn't a problem for everybody. Yeah. For me, for you, for maybe for some other people, it's like, wait, this game's 60 hours to go through the main story? Okay, <laughs> right. I'm going to take January to January, and I'm going to chip away at it bit by bit. Right. And that's fine. I'm trying to blow through this as fast as I can, because I've got to get to the end of it for Game of the Year, along with everything else I've still got to play. So, right. In that aspect, it's a problem for me personally, but so far I have not seen, minus the the randomly generated quests, these people stole my gold, go and get the, the mission thing. They mm. do feel very written and defaulty trope kind of methodology. Oh, okay. But all of the other side quests where it's like, oh, this is, this is, uh, this is an ostracism vote. Go do this mm -hmm. mission for me in regards to this ostracism vote. Oh, and hey, there's Socrates. Because <laughs> we're in Greece, so why not? Right. You know? There's, like, the, the actual quests that don't are not the randomly generated quests feel solid. They feel like the origin ones, where it's mm -hmm. like, here is an insight into this world, here is an insight into the into this this land, this this method of doing stuff. I'm pretty sure I have just bumped into a child who is making things for her friends out of clay. I'm pretty sure she's just making people out of clay. 
Okay. But I'm not sure yet because I still have to do that quest line. But in stuff like this where it's like, this is a kid playing in a clay pit because that's where the bricks were made. And it's like, oh, look, this is where the bricks were made. Oh, look, there's the salt mines and so on and so forth. It's like, that. those types of missions I genuinely adore. Mm -hmm. The randomly generated missions... They're the ones that feel a little more waste of my time-ish. Do you feel like you can skip them? Yes, but the problem is it's very hard to tell which ones are randomly generated. Oh, okay. Because some of them are named in such a way where you're like, ooh, this is going to be a story. It's like, no, it's go kill these people over here. Right. And some of them have stories. you got the, the guy who had a slave and his vase was stolen. And Cassandra says... Vase and the guy says vase, so it's really weird listening to them talk about it. Yeah, that is weird. Uh, but it's really, really cool. And something I'm going to mention now. I don't know if I can. Okay, um, no, I'm going to mention it in the, in the flattest way I can. I have heard some of the voice acting for uh, Alexandrios, or whatever his name is, the mm -hmm. the male version of the main character. Right. Never play that guy. Oh, really? It is horrendously bad. That's so surprising. It. Uh, the best way I can describe this is it feels like someone trying to do Conan, and not... Conan the sequels or Arnie in his later movies I'm talking OG Conan where he barely has a grasp of the English language and he's chewing the scenery yes <laughs> yeah. like me Alexandros me big and strong right that, <laughs> right. that kind and of and Socrates acting. is like oh hello good sir yes Cassandra is she's she's flirty she's smart she's quick witted she's really right. well voice acted Whereas Alexandrios feels like he is a meathead trying to yeah, get chunk back over the world. there. <laughs> yes, <laughs> it's so bad. Like yeah. I don't understand how you could get that big of a difference between yeah. the guy and the girl. But play as Cassandra. Like, if you haven't started the show, play as Cassandra. It's not. It's it. It's to the point where it's like a bad joke listening to him talk. Yeah. It's like someone right. trying to overact in a B movie. A fan dub? Yes, exactly. Oh, Assassin's Creed Odyssey abridged, but yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. It's really, really bad. Yeah. So don't play as him. Man. Uh, my final game this week, Forza Horizon 4, because of course it yeah. is. Yeah. I played a lot of that this morning. Yes, I've played a lot of it this week. It's real bad, folks, because these are the two games where it's like, I want to get home. It's like, do I want to climb or do I want to drive? Right. <laughs> Which one do I want to do tonight? Right. It's. I mean, I mean, do you want to start? I mean, I don't know how much I could say. The, the, the game is. It's it's good. Yeah, I, I um I spent a whole bunch of uh, the what I'm doing now is I'm just going and finding all the roads. Mm -hmm. Um, before we recorded, I hit 512 roads, and there's 539, 531, something like that. Mm-hmm. And I can't find any more, <laughs> so I'm not sure if seasons change that or if I'm just missing one of those, like, cluster of back yeah. rows, the orange dotted ones somewhere. I think I'm uh, up to about 506 or something like that now. Yeah, I just bypassed you. You're at 499, 501, something, something around there. Like, you and I are, are neck and neck. Yeah. Um, for me, it's the cities. I always miss the cities and the dual carriageways. Yeah, I just did Edinburgh um, and got, like, 40 roads just in half an hour. Um, it does feel like they have a lot less of those roads where it's like, all right, here's a giant freeway and this little tiny driveway coming off of it. It feels like there's a lot less of those or yes. it's a lot easier to see when you're just moving your cursor around them on the map. So I, I appreciate that. Yeah. Um, but... Finding roads on the winter map is tough. Yeah. <laughs> so white roads on a white background is not great. Yeah, and that's, that's I mean, speed traps, speed zones, yes. all of these getting things on a lot winter. Of, <laughs> a lot of two stars on speed zones. <laughs> I'm getting a lot of one stars on speed zones. Yeah. But I, I, I do really appreciate how each season feels 
very, very different. Like, it's not... The thing that I like about Winter is it doesn't feel uncontrollable. Yes. You just have to... You can't play as a tiny, super light, you know, uh, drifting car. Because that's not going to go... Pull out your trucks, pull out your four wheels. Like, yeah, those are... get your snow tires Those are the on. ones you want. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I will say I made the biggest mistake ever, which is there is a mission quest in there, which is, like, uh, rent to own the fastest cars or whatever. Like, it's a... It's one of the storyline story line missions mm-hmm. in the game. I made the mistake of starting that in winter when you oh, are no. driving things like a McLaren F1 uh, Pagani Zonda <laughs> as quickly as possible from A to B. It's like, oh, Oops. I'm in Edinburgh. All the, all the, the streets are salted. This is perfect. Nice smooth right. controls and turns. Oh, I hit the highway over the mountains. I'm barrel rolling into a pit and I'm dead. I, I do like how they did that, though, because, like, when you get out of the city, some areas of the roads are uncovered just naturally or, or because they're in the sun, and some roads aren't, and it's hard to find where the road is. And yep. I, that's It's nice to see, you know, lakes are frozen over and rivers are passable, and it plays differently. It's still the same map, but it's it it feels different enough that I'm going to be excited every Thursday when the game resets to say, like, all right, okay, cool. it's a new season, cool. Like, let's go Yeah. Let's go see what fun stuff is going to happen this week. Uh, while we were all playing yesterday, which we all we got a group of five together and we just cruised around for a little bit, did some races and stuff, I think Justin pointed out that he, his opinion is, I might just skip the winter months. <laughs> yeah, it's it's pre- it's pretty hard. Yeah, it's it is one of those things where it changes the dynamic of the game so much, which mm-hmm. is fantastic based on the core concept that they're going for. Yeah, not so fantastic if you have a struggling with a child misbehaving <laughs> around you, for example. Right. Well, and the thing too is the AI seems to respond appropriately. So it's not, ah, oh, there's a whole bunch of snow on the ground and they're doing 130 and taking corners perfectly. Like, they're struggling with it, too. Yeah. It was actually really cool because I think I did, I think it was one of the events we did, like, a street race and, like, we were all in, like, off-roads and stuff like that. And there were a mm-hmm. couple of people in their street race in, like, like um, Corvette Z06s and stuff like that. <laughs> right. It's like, okay, how are they going to handle it? And they still got around the track, but they was they could not break as quickly as we could. They couldn't turn as quickly as we could. They're fishtailing like crazy. Yeah, but then on the straights, yeah. they were doing pretty good for speed. So it's like, uh, right. it's one of those pretty good like back and forths where it's like, okay, they seem to have done a pretty good job of nailing down these seasons. Right. I don't appreciate the weekly challenge this this month though with the 7 million skill points needed within a week. Yeah, I'm the thing I realized this week as I'm trying to find all the roads is I figured I'll find all of the roads or like 529 out of the 530 whatever. Yep. And then go back to doing some races and probably accidentally discover one or two roads while I'm doing that. I realized that I sort of don't care about a lot of the secondary content in this game. Like Forza, Forza Thon, I, I don't really care. I'm probably not going to engage with that at all. I'll accidentally do a challenge or two every week. That's fine. I like buying houses. I'll keep doing that. But I don't think I'm going to worry about, especially early on, a lot of this stuff in this game. Like... The experience bar for tuning or painting cars. Yeah. That, that will stay at one. Yep. Forever, basically. 100% for me, this is the exact same yeah. way. It will forever stay that way for me. I'm, yeah. I'm fine with that. I'm, like you said, I'm literally going to engage on this at the level I want to, which mm. I'm loving it. I just think it's a bit ridiculous to expect someone to get 7 million points. Like, I put yeah. a lot of time into this game this week, and I'm at like two and a half. Yeah. It's, it's a little bit ridiculous. But yeah. that's fine. You know, people will have done it. People will have got it. I'm not going to spend an hour just doing circles in a field so I can get my skill points <laughs> up. Right, getting your kangaroo bonus. Yes, exactly. But yeah. it, it, I mean, the Forza, the, the Fortathon live stuff is genuinely quite fun just because mm-hmm. it usually turns into a bunch of chaos as people driving down the roads at the same time trying to get speed traps and stuff. 
Oh, like, yeah. That's just, you, that's just fun in being really dumb. Seeing eight right. people go off a jump at the same time just because they're all trying to get the, the jump the bonus. Burnout Paradise style. Exactly. Like, that, that yeah. stuff is fun in the best kind of chaotic way. But, yeah, I'm, I'm not going to go all in. I'm not going to be, like, trying my best to, to be top of the charts and stuff like that. So, I'm, right. I'll have fun with it. We'll see how it goes. Yeah. I, I'm still enjoying it. I mean, I... I'm surprised how much fun I'm having just finding the roads, and I'm glad I'm doing it early. That way it's not, all right, this is the last thing I need to do. I need to find two more roads, and I've done everything on the map. Yeah, that way it's Um, not just me sending you screenshots of you being literally one behind me at all times. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. Oh, speaking of that, um, is there a photo challenge in this game, like in 3? I... (laughs) This should tell you that I I mentioned I didn't want to look at the achievements for this or Odyssey when I first kicked them off. I just wanted to play them. The very first thing I did in this game was first race. As soon as it started, I went into photo mode. I took a photo. I I did too. I came out of that photo. I didn't get any bonus. And I was like, okay, that's fine. I'm good. Don't have to photograph 500 cars. I'm fine with that. I think 500 individual cars. Yeah. I yeah. think there is there there is a photo mode in it, but I think it's just a case of likes and stuff like that on your photos. Oh, okay, just sharing cool photos. Yes. Okay. I don't know if I'm very happy or very sad about that. I'm I'm, I'm, I'm not sure. I'm a little torn, but yeah, I kind of liked it in three because I you had something else to do while you're going from race to race or discovering roads or something, but it did make the game feel pretty choppy. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I don't know, uh, but yeah, I'm I'm still having fun with it. I I feel like my initial harshness is cooling off. Yeah, I'm J- n- now that I'm figuring out what to ignore. Yeah, I to be honest, I'm feeling very much the same way. It's like the overexposure of the amount of things to do. It's just like okay, I'm just gonna do what I want to do right now. Uh, you know, mm-hmm. uh, the rest of it, I'll get to it in the end eventually, or I won't. Maybe right, but. As long as it has doesn't have an achievement, that's fine. Yeah. <laughs> Some of those. I looked at the achievement list once, and I was sort of like, "All right, nothing seems impossible," and then immediately forgot about it. Yep. <laughs> uh, but no, quick shout out as well. Yeah, it was um, myself, my wife, you, uh, T Bomb Rocks, and Brain Eater from the community all jumped in on Saturday. Is then yep. where I had the realization that people care about sports. So right. maybe three o'clock on the Saturday afternoon is probably not a good idea. So during football hour, yes. So we'll yeah. see. I might end up trying to get something together later next Saturday, but we have I have got double duty next Saturday, so we shall right. see. Uh, but no, yeah. it, I mean it was fun. It was five oh, yeah. five idiots driving around together, and <laughs> my favorite thing about it is that they continue the thing from three, which is you don't have to win, you just have to finish. And I yep. love that because it doesn't yep. mean I have to go back in and redo the event over and over and over and over again. Yeah. It just means we can go in, we can watch as Rob Barrow rolls himself off a cliff for the fourth <laughs> time, or as Jess uncontrollably grinds around a corner again, and right. Justin forgets to take off his granny mode on his car, which <laughs> that's not an insult to Justin. He was letting his children play, so he had auto steering and auto braking on, and then. Yep. He, we couldn't figure out why he was literally dead last the entire <laughs> By time. By, like, minutes. Yes. <laughs> so, yeah. we'll try and keep that in mind next time. Yeah. Well, no, it was fun. Like, it was genuinely just yep. a bunch of us being stupid together. Shooting the poops, racing some races. Yep. Me having internet problems. It's the usual stuff. Yes. <laughs> yeah. But oh, no, man. Oh, uh, Horizon 4 is great. I love that game. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the other games I played this week, uh, a lot of Destiny 2. Destiny 2. So, <laughs> so I'm going through and I'm doing the Luna's Howl quest. So this is, there's two PvP quests. One is the competitive playlist, or the, the uh, quick play playlist one. That you get you Redrix's Broadsword, which is a special um, uh, pulse rifle. It's not uh, a soul. I'm... Yeah, it's there's a whole lore. We'll just leave it there. I I get that, but Destiny Two has swords. Yeah, but they really suck. 
So then, I think they're like... Then make a sword that's great and call it Frederick's broadsword or whatever. <laughs> I don't think they can make a good sword in Destiny 2 right now. The swords need a total overhaul, which is weird because they were overpowered in Destiny 1. Odd. Uh, fi- fixing things that weren't broken. <clears throat> yep. Um, so I'm, I'll get that one. That one's comparatively easy i'm on the second to last step the last step is reset your uh um quick play uh progress five times i'm already uh about to reset it the second time that's just a, a time thing the competitive one however is a ridiculously powered almost too overpowered hand cannon uh called luna's howl I decided because I'm dumb yes. that I wanted to go do it. <laughs> this this much we can all agree on. Boston is yeah. dumb. I'm on the second to last step now. So, Isn't this the one that like like three, four weeks ago you were like, yeah, I'm not going to go for that because it's competitive? Uh-huh, yeah, but I'm dumb. I'm getting much better at PvP though, <laughs> which is, <laughs> you know, trial by fire over here. <laughs> um so here are the quests that the steps that I've gone through. A couple of them are easy. Like first one, complete ten competitive matches. Okay, easy. Yeah. You don't have to win them. Anybody could do Just that. Com- That's easy. Yeah. Next one, get one hundred and fifty hand cannon kills in competitive. You have to land the killing blow. Okay, that's time consuming but doable based on the way I play because I almost yeah. always I am the assist king. Me too. I have had to be more aggressive. Mm-hmm. Um, so that is. That is a good, uh, it's also been a great ground for me to get better with hand cannons in PvP, Mm -hmm. um, which I get the impression this whole quest chain is, we're going to give you this crazy strong hand cannon at the end, we want you to be really good with hand cannons. So So after that, hold on, so they they get you to improve your skill with the weapon that you will receive at the end, and then at the end they give you that weapon that you have gotten better at, and then make it maybe a little bit too more powerful. So Yep, it's awesome. It's <laughs> get good, and we will right. reward you. Exactly, and that's like that's the whole thing about the competitive playlist too, because you get points when you win, you lose points when you lose. So you have to get better if you want to keep progressing. Mm-hmm. Um, next one is 200 solar kills in competitive. And that's la- killing blows as well. Okay. Well, depending on your class and so on and so forth. That can be easy, can be difficult. That took a real long time. Oh, you, what, t- what class are you? <clears throat> I'm a warlock. Don't you have the solar hand cannon and a special ability? No, that is hunter. I have the throw solar swords one. Okay. Then that, yeah, that's not yeah. great. Yeah. It's not bad but i i found a couple of guns that were solar that i used and that that went okay okay next step is complete three rumble matches it's literally called taking a break (laughs) you go in you finish three rumble matches it takes you maybe 10 minutes okay (laughs) because the next one is the hard one well the second to last one is this the second hardest one get 100 hand cannon precision kills in competitive Yeah. I'm at 70 of 100. (laughs) And it has taken a while. I am real good with hand cannons at this point. (laughs) TVGP community, this is a call. We need to produce a banner and some cake and have a Skype multi-call because I'm not flying to California for this stuff. You need help, comma, Boston. Yes. (laughs) Your destiny destiny goes apart, Boston, is what it's yes. going to say. Because you need an intervention, dude. Yeah. Like, seriously. But Destiny 2 is so good. <laughs> I, I don't get me wrong. I can I I don't get to harp on about anybody. Look at how many hours I've put into, oh, I don't know, Elite Dangerous. Right. I. It's, it's the same thing where it's sort of like, it. you have so many goals that you're working towards that you can even spend an hour... I can spend an hour and I can knock out probably five or six competitive matches. Mm-hmm. Oh, um, and in a in a competitive match, I can get probably ten headshot hand cannon kills. Um, so you know, I can make pretty great progress. So each time I'm on there, Boston got good. I I'm I'm getting pretty 
I'm getting better. Okay, and say. considering you are like me and you don't like to give yourself a compliment, what that means is if I ever came across you in multiplayer, I would regret it. Yeah, probably. See? Because <laughs> the last step is you need to reach f- the fabled rank in the competitive playlist. Now, fabled rank is at 2,100 points. I am currently stuck at 900. Okay, so you're never going to get this challenge. I have a ch- I have a, a chance of doing it. I will probably have to start finding groups mm-hmm. once I finish the hand cannon step just to get the communication down, get the, the call-outs down. You know, all of us, we're going to go set the bomb on this spot. Don't split up because they will kill us. Yeah. Um, that's That sort of stuff. I... I can get that over time. Um, it's just I have like a month and a half to do it. So I feel like it's going to be pretty tight. But because you get quick play rank points when you're playing competitive, I'm working on both quests at the same time, which yeah, thank you, Bungie, for doing the smart thing. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Makes so I, I, I have been playing a lot of, of competitive and... On the other side of the coin, um, the the group that we have together, it's myself, Musim, and our, our friend Joey. Um, we're now finally at the point where we can do the Nightfall regularly. So now we have one more thing weekly to do to get our, our light levels up and, and get all that done. So um, it's still really great, and we still have a whole ton of stuff to do once we... Once we get a little bit higher, then we'll have another quest line to do. And once we get up to 590, we'll have the dungeon to do. And that sort of stuff, so... Yeah. Um, I mean, yeah. As long as you're having fun, what does it matter? You know? Well, it's nice to finally go in and... It's like Forza Horizon. And it's like Assassin's Creed Odyssey. You go in and, like, I'll see all the weekly things and all the daily stuff. And I go... I have to prioritize some of these because I can't do all... All of them. Like, yep. you know, we'll do the Nightfall, and I'll probably do a couple of strikes. But I won't be, I won't do, f- you know, every four days you can do five heroic missions, and that'll get you powerful gear. There's Gambit, and PvP, and planet stuff, and all, there's just so much stuff for you to do to get stronger that it's nice that there's almost too much of it to do, because you can play exactly what you want to play, and you'll get rewarded for it. Boston, can I uh, yes. interest you in a little game called Warframe? I'm pretty uh, sure we could no. get a certain <laughs> Mr. Musum to play this game. I I feel like I feel like there's just like with mobile games, there's like one gotcha game I can play on mobile at a time, and I'll play that, you know, um, fairly in a dedicated manner. Mm-hmm. I can't play anything other than Destiny Two that's like that, because then. I, I don't want to go down two rabbit holes at the same time. Yes. <laughs> yeah. When, when Destiny 2 finally breaks you, come yes. and join Team Warframe. Okay. Once Destiny 3 comes out. <laughs> Please. Let's wait for the yeah. next Destiny update and see how that breaks. Yeah, I don't know. Well, the next DLC is coming out. Uh, rumor is December. So, we And we see. have th- three events going on at the same time next week, so... <laughs> Why not? There's, there's so much stuff. It's so good. Um, all right. Speaking of so good, my last game is Hollow Knight. I'm I at, really need to get back to this like a lot. It's, really, it's so good. I know, I'm, but I'm, dude, honestly, I know. There's so much other stuff. Um, I'm now doing a lot of the stuff that I didn't do on my first playthrough on Switch. I think I'm at ninety three, ninety five percent, something around there. Oh wow. Um, out of a potential 112%. Um, I wanted to fully upgrade my nail, the, the sword thing that you're carrying. Um, so I finally went through and I did oh, the... Oh, it's so dumb that that's a nail and you're a bug and it's a perfect size for a sword. That's amazing. Keep, keep going. Yep, it's really good. Um, the fully upgraded nail looks super cool too. Um, and it is crazy strong. Um, <clears throat> I finally went through and did the first two Coliseum of Fools challenges. I tried them once on the Switch version and had nothing but trouble. Controller? Um, what's that? Controller? Like, the, I'm guessing yeah. the PlayStation controller it, helped? It wasn't so much that as I have a 
better understanding of which charms complement each other. Um, so now I have 10 charm slots now, so I can equip, you know, three to five charms, uh, depending on what I use. So I found a, a set that I really like that's offensively focused. Mm-hmm. And beat both of the first two challenges the first try. <laughs> nice. <laughs> so I, I was really worried about going through and doing those. Um, I'm still worried about the third one, mostly because of the final boss of the, the Coliseum. Um, but that got me the last upgrade piece to to upgrade the sword. So um, I'm uh, checking stuff off my checklist and, and feeling pretty great. I'm, I'm now fighting <clears throat> some of the optional bosses, um, one of which is crazy hard and i i i still don't have its pattern down yet um once i get that down i'll i'll probably beat it pretty easily but um it's it's the dark souls thing of okay now pond, i know when they yeah, pond recognition when they, and it's, technically it's the megamon thing really isn't it <laughs> yeah that's true well it's the sort of thing where like all right when they lean back like this they're gonna swipe forward and then jump up so i have to go you know, jump up and dash forward to where they were, that sort of thing. Um, I also did start the Grim Troop DLC sort of accidentally. Um, Is that a was life, but goth? No, that would be great. Um, I This one's really interesting because you get a charm that has a little thing that flies behind you, and it marks these enemies on the map. You go Go find them, go fight them. It absorbs these flames. Every time you absorb three, you go back to the the leader of the troop, whose name is Grim, um, and she, he, I don't, I don't know which one, um, will then give you another set of things to do. I've done enough of them so that I can fight Grim, and it's easily the hardest fight I've had in this game by far. Nice. Um, 95% of it is avoidance. And then every once in a while, you'll get a very, very small window of opportunity to do damage with, and you have to do as much damage as you can do with one slash. Okay, um, it's the stupid wolf from Dark Souls. Okay. <laughs> yep, the wolf with a giant sword in his mouth, one of the best looking, most intense boss fights you'll have. Also one of the most depressing, make me cry stories in that game. Oh no. <sighs> Dark Souls. Um, but yeah, I'm I'm slowly closing in on stuff that I'm worried about doing, like the platforming challenge thing. Mm, yep. Have, well, now you have you have your controller of choice, so hopefully. Yeah. I'm. I'm. The thing I'm worried about it is it. Here's an advanced tip for for people that may be having trouble with um, uh, Hollow Knight. You can pogo jump, down slash jump off of enemies that are invulnerable. You can also do that on spikes Honey. if you get the timing right. I can't get the timing right. That is really important for that platforming challenge. Okay. <laughs> so I I feel like that is going to be that is going to be controller biting uh, frustration on that one. Use one of your old uh, dual socks. Don't use one of the new ones. Yeah, I'll use one of the one of the half broken ones. But I'm I'm still really enjoying Hollow Knight. I still have. Uh, I started the first DLC pack, the Grim Troop. I have three more after that. But I feel like how Hollow Knight now has all that stuff integrated, especially on the the console versions. I feel like I've been doing some of the stuff anyway, so I when I look up some of the other DLC packs, it's probably like, oh no, I've been I've been you know, absorbing those motes of light for the entire time, you know. I, okay, I'm halfway yeah. done with that. That's that's cool, um, but yeah, it's still it's still really great, and I I I just need to suck it up, and I need to go explore the rest of the map, but it's in Deep Nest, and I don't want to go back there because it's a a living nightmare. <laughs> But I have to, and I, I just don't want to. <laughs> uh, didn't you refer to that area as uh, Hollow Knight's uh, Blight Town? Yes. Yeah, it is, but with spiders. Great. Yeah, just it's great. It's not great. I. It feels really good going through there on a brand new playthrough because it's like I know exactly where to go. I know exactly where to do. I know where all the traps are because they bit me every single <laughs> time that I went through there the first time. 
This last time I did it in one shot, and that felt really good. Nice. Yeah. Uh, but that's all the games I've been playing, so let's take a break. talk releases for the week of october 15th 2018 lego dc super villains comes out for pc switch ps4 and xbox one <sighs> why why more lego games why i i feel like i'm now at the point with lego dc games that or i guess lego superhero games in general I'm gonna wait and see on this one. This isn't a to, this isn't a gimme. Yeah, see if it's more of the same. Yeah, I, it could be fun playing as villains. Mm-hmm. But it's gonna be but, the same. It's gonna be the exact same story. It's gonna be the same yeah. gameplay. You already know everything you need to do. Yeah, I'm, I don't. I don't know if I feel like a Lego game right now. Yeah. You know, there's there's a Lego season, and we're not in Lego season. No, Lego season yeah. is when the snow is piled up outside. Right. March. Yes. <laughs> yeah. November NBA through 2K, March. Yeah. NBA 2K Playgrounds 2 comes out for PC, Switch, PS4, and Xbox One. I'm kind of interested in this, mostly because from what I hear, it's basically an overhaul from the previous game, which was okay. kind of just pooped out the door. Oh, bummer. But I will wait and see on this one, I think. Yeah. Uh, Starlink Battle for Atlas comes out for Switch, PS4, and Xbox One. This is the oh, U- so Ubisoft cool. strap a uh, uh, spaceship on your controller uh, flight game. The Switch version has some Star Fox stuff in it. Mm-hmm. It looks so this, cool. I don't want to. I don't want a toy attached to my thing. N- no, it could be neat. Uh, Obviously, we are way older than the target market for this. We are um, right in that window, and you know it. That's fair. <laughs> if we if we had disposable late thirties disposable income, <laughs> yeah. If we had yeah. if we both had more disposable income than we currently have, you know full well we would both be on on this train. I I would be on in on this train. Number one, if the gameplay is good. Number two, if the spaceship you put on your controller looks cool. It does. You know it does. It looks. Good. But I mean, put it put a Destiny tie in. Have my Destiny ship Ugh. on my controller. Pff, I'm done. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So Switch has got Star Fox. PlayStation can have its Destiny ship. Sure. Uh, I, the Pelican I don't think would fit on it for Microsoft. So. Elite Dangerous. Mm, that's not a bad show, actually. Just a giant freighter. Yes. <laughs> like a two-foot-long freighter. <laughs> <laughs> you can't pick up your controller. It's that big. Yeah, it'd be so good. He's just knocking, bumping in your TV from your couch. Mm-hmm. So good. Uh, Dark Souls Remastered comes out on the Switch. This seems like the not the best platform to play it on. Wait, the Switch might not be the best platform to play a Japanese-developed game from 10 years ago. <laughs> Apparently it runs fine, but does not look super great. Which is probably fine. That thing, you know, Dark Souls was never optimized well to begin with. No. No. You know, yeah. and I'm surprised they got it as crisp and clean as they could on the Xbox, on the Xbox One and the PlayStation 4. But honestly, yeah. I think that's just brute force. I don't think they've done <laughs> any optimization. Likely. They've just thought, well, yeah. can it run it better? Yes, it and can. And how much more powerful this thing is. Yeah. And last but not least, Soul Calibur VI comes out PC, PS4, and <sighs> Xbox One. I, I know very little about this. I don't like fighting games. I yeah. just don't. I still haven't pulled the, tr- the trigger on Fighter Z because I, who would I play it with? Me and right. the AI. I don't right. do well with fighting games. Yet still, I'm so interested in the next Dead or Alive game and this yeah. game because Dead or Alive for me is a, a no brainer. Oh, <clears throat> it looks so good! Like I, it's Soul Calibur, dude. It's crazy. Yep. You think Tekken's crazy? Play some Soul Calibur. <laughs> I I think when I look at Soul Calibur, to me as an outsider, that looks like more Soul Calibur. 
when I look at Dead or Alive, I look at it and go, okay, they're trying to change some of the fundamentals of the game. I'm sure a bunch of outsiders would be like, that still looks like the She Kicks High game for the sixth time. Mm -hmm. Um, But there's one big difference with the new Dead or Alive game. mm -hmm. Haven't they gotten rid of the physics? Uh, Largely, from what it seems, yeah. And it looks... (laughs) Was largely a pun? Because that was a really good pun. (laughs) Ha ha! No, I think they're... um, I think they're still trying to figure out how far... Yeah, I think they're trying to make it realistic and not go too far, because I feel for them. Like, at this point, Dead or Alive 5 was a really incredible fighting game, and everyone goes, <laughs> boobs. Yep. You know, like, that's that's the only thing that people have a, as a takeaway for the game, and I think that continues to hurt that series from it being something that's at Evo, you know, something that's seen as something serious on the, the the international fighting game stage. And with it looking more realistic and having a darker color palette and being less cartoonish and being less uh, jiggly, um, I think that will... I think the more they can turn that down, the better that will serve the series. Yeah. I mean, people, when Dive Kip came along, people were like, oh, it's a great look into the psychology of a fighting game. Mm-hmm. You know, two buttons, the last seconds of a round, every single round. I get that. Yep. Dead or Alive is a four-button fighter. It's yep. kick, punch, block, and parry, I believe. Yeah. That's about as psychological as you can get when it comes to <laughs> fighting games. It is yep. all about what move you make compared to what move the opposition makes. Yeah, and really reading your opponent. Mm-hmm. I, it would do so yeah. well, I think. It... That game could produce some of the all-time great, like, Evo tournaments if it was given the chance. I mean, look at Fighter Z yep. this year. Oh yeah, <laughs> God, the highlight clips from from Fighters is just some insane stuff. And I feel like the thing that a lot of these tournaments are finally figuring out is you need to have two good commentators: one that's speaking to the hardcore, and one that's saying, "Here's what this super move does." Like the the yes. newcomers. You need a yeah. color and you need a, a descriptor. Right, right. To use wrestling terms. <laughs> right. Uh, all right, let's move into news stories. First up, Sony in early 2019 is finally planning on letting you change your PlayStation screen name. Did they announce the release date as this as April 1st by any chance? <laughs> I, I mean... I wouldn't be surprised. Because I'm um, not going to lie, that would be the best thing that would be that really Sony's ever And done. then they'd be like, ha ha, finger guns, pew, pew, gotcha. Yep. You can change your no, name. No, wait, please come back. Here's what it used to be. Here's what you want it to be. And it's just the same. <laughs> yeah. Um, first name change is free. After that, will cost you 10 bucks. Same as Sony does. That's th- Those are very fair prices. Yep. Um, it will only be $5 for PlayStation Plus uh, subscribers. I think that's fair as well. Mm-hmm. Um, the interesting thing they did that I'm surprised Microsoft hasn't done, but I, I don't know how many people will do this, is when you change your name, you have an option of displaying your old name alongside your new one for a period of time That's for a recognition. really clever idea considering how many people on my friends list frequently change their names. And I'm just like, <laughs> okay, I don't know who Boxman746 is because it right. used to be something completely different. Right. You're, yeah, he used to be like Monkey Farter 420, and it's just like, who? yeah, I didn't even know you in the first place, dude. Uh-huh. The only catch, it's it's modern day Sony, so there has to be a catch. Yep, I, I love <laughs> Death this 2K catch. And I Chad love says, this catch so much. D- Death 2K in chat says, all names must start with Sony underscore is underscore the underscore best. Yes. <laughs> um, The catch is... The name change might not work with all games. Yep. <laughs> Sony's working on the issue now to try and resolve it. Sounds like it's probably an SDK issue. Um, they're going to have a full list of games that might not work without patches for the games once the program comes out for real. Come on, Sony. Here is my question. 
if if you let's say you happen to love the Uncharted collection, which I'm sure is not going to sure. be affected by this because it's a Sony game, so it'll be fine. Let's right. say you love it, and then you change your name, and you think, oh, I can go back. I've only got two trophies left to get my platinum. I can get that. No problem. Nice and easy. Mm-hmm. And then you jump back in. It's like, sorry, we can't find a save file for you. Right. Uh, what's this save file? Uh, well, there's a save file in here, but it's not for you. But now it's corrupted. Oh, well. Have fun. Yeah. See you later. Like, <laughs> I get it. I genuinely do get it. Like it's a very difficult and complex thing to do. It just tickles me that this still <laughs> they can't figure this out. The the frustrating part for me is like with the crossplay stuff, obviously they've been discussing this internally for a considerable amount of time. Mm-hmm. When you started those discussions and engineering discovery tasks, you identify the issue then then you start working with developers and working with your SDK to resolve it. Then, if it's that insurmountable of a problem, do you do it until the PS5? No, I would... <laughs> I would wait. I would 100% wait till the PlayStation 5 if I was them. Because at this yeah, point... And just do a day one. I'm not going to lie, in all honesty, this feels like a heart and mind fight. This feels like a move yeah. designed to be like... We've made some debug moves over the past couple of months. Right. Let's see what we can push out the door. Well, this is... Uh, this. I was going to say, obviously. This seems very uh, coincidental with them announcing... Uh, pulling away the online support for a whole bunch of PS3 online games. Mm-hmm. So, like PlayStation All-Stars. Um, so it seems very much like, okay, those were the last games that were really causing us issues on PSN that supported this old janky busted stuff. Mm-hmm. Let's get rid of those and then let's start working on some of this stuff. So yeah. I'm hoping when it comes out, it's a list of games that no one really plays anymore. Like yeah. it's Little Big Planet 3. You, <laughs> you can't look at leaderboards when you change your name. It's like, that's fine. That's fine. Nobody's going to care about that one. You know, uh, Sonic Racing, the first Sonic Racing game on PS3 doesn't work anymore. Don't you dare say that when Vinny Caravella might hear you say that. <laughs> I know. Well, he probably doesn't need to change his name anyway. No, that's true. Yeah. All right, next news story. John Carmack and Zenimax Oof. have finally ended their legal dispute. Uh, this is one I had forgotten about, that ZeniMax is in two legal disputes. Um, basically, he says that his legal disputes are over and they have, quote, fully satisfied their obligations, end quote, to him following the 2009 purchase of id Software. Mm-hmm. So it sounds like Johnny Carmack walked away with a big W on that, from the sounds of it. Probably. And probably a pretty big... I think a lot of it was dealing with him splitting... Uh, stocks Mm -hmm. so it sounds like he probably also made probably tens of millions of dollars on the end of that too Mm -hmm. a nice big w yeah uh they are zenimax is still in uh a legal dispute with oculus though so okay so the drama continues but john carmack is out the door so that's good to know right but i I, I still don't... I think he's still involved in the Oculus lawsuit as well, but I'm not sure if his involvement has gotten cleared in that or not. Mm-hmm. But uh, we probably won't find out until a couple decades from now anyway, but at the very least when the, the court case is over. Yep. Yeah. Next news story, rumor, Microsoft is close to buying Obsidian. One of our favorite developers here. Uh, a source told uh, Jason Scryer over at Kotaku, who he's to usually be reminded, pretty solid. Yeah, has a, has a solid track record uh, that Microsoft is about ninety percent of the way there to purchasing Obsidian, and it's a matter of when, not if. Okay, um, first things first. Name change, yes or no? I say no. No, I think Obsidian has. Because of New Vegas, I, I think Obsidian has too much clout. The yeah, name it has, has too a much cachet clout. based on the actual name yep. of the studio, which, I mean, you don't even throw. Coat. And because of Stick of Truth and Kotor. Yeah, I feel like that one is. I feel like when people talk about Obsidian, they mostly talk I, about New Vegas. Yeah, and Stick of Truth a little bit, but I, I feel like they don't go back to Kotor anymore. Mm-hmm. They definitely don't mention twenty. 
2010's game of the year. I don't even... 2007? 2008? 2009? Yeah, I don't remember. Go on. I'll look up. I'm not even going to say the name of the game. You know what I'm talking about anyway. But nobody... Nobody talks about that except for us. 2010. There we go. That wasn't too bad. 2010 was like my first or second guess. Well, the rumor that's swirling around this is an Alpha Protocol remaster as well. I don't want a remaster. I want a... Backwards compatibility. I want to reboot. Well, I think you do both. Mm. I think you remind people of, hey, here's Alpha Protocol. We squashed all the bugs because of Microsoft money. It's great. And then Alpha Protocol 2 comes out a couple of months later. You know, like it gets announced a couple months later. Yeah. Um, I feel like this is one of those decisions that if you're Microsoft, you look at Obsidian and you say, how much money do you want? Yeah. We will give you the money and the time you've never had. Yeah, you do um, a Sony Santa Monica. You yep. You say, here is a check. Here is <laughs> how, write however many zeros you need on the end of this, and right. then take your time. Like they've been doing with um, Crackdown 3. Mm-hmm. And they've, with, with Obsidian, look at stuff like their crowdfunding campaigns. They have done yeah. amazing work with, let's face it, minimal money. Yep. Give them a check. Write them, write it however big it needs to be, and then walk away and let them do what they can do. Get Matt Rory back on Obsidian to make <laughs> Alpha Protocol. Right. Yeah, Pillars of Eternity. I keep forgetting made so millions of dollars just mm-hmm. just because they said they were going to make, and they did make, you know, a classic point and click uh, CRPG. Mm-hmm. Like so, I. I hope, I hope Microsoft does. They have the time, they have the money, and they have the patience to let Obsidian come out with something great. And the only time that's really happened is Stick of Truth. Mm-hmm. Pills of Eternity launched with issues. You know, a lot of other stuff. Yeah. Before that, launched with issues. New but, Vegas will launch with a whole bunch of issues. Yeah. Alpha Protocol did too. That are probably still issues to this day. But. Yeah. It's yeah. funny because when this this started getting talked about in our Discord channel, mm-hmm. I was talking about it with my wife. Uh, we have the current outstanding bet, which is when I get every achievement in Tropico 3, she will play Alpha Protocol because right. she does not believe that I know what games she will enjoy. Right. What, despite the fact that she is probably the biggest fangirl of New Vegas you could probably point to. That's mm-hmm. my wife. Um, she loves New Vegas like nobody's business. I consistently believe that she would genuinely love Alpha Protocol if yep if, if there's limited bug interaction in that case. Yeah. <clears throat> so we were talking about this, and she literally said to me, "I bet you if the if they announce a remaster for it, you will immediately beat Tropico Three just so I have to play the remaster." <laughs> I mean, you're not wrong. No, she was. She is one hundred percent right. Under you. Yeah, it's like, oh, Alpha Protocol is being remastered. Tropico Three, all, all achievements done. Let's go. There you go, right. babe. Enjoy your Alpha. Your Protocol. turn up to bat. <laughs> Thank me when you're done. Yep. Uh, next news story: Microsoft has also announced. Well, Microsoft has announced they haven't announced anything, but it's sitting. Uh, they announced their Xbox game cloud streaming tech called Project X Cloud. Uh, this one's stupid names. interesting because they've they've sort of put out a couple different news stories. One of them is like stream stuff to your phone and in your tablet and all this cool stuff, and the other one is here's our server architecture, mm-hmm. um, which was they made a server that's basically two Xbox ones mushed together with a bunch of networking, and it's it's pretty cool. Um, so right now they're doing a bunch of they announced it because they're doing a bunch of back end. Uh, like server infrastructure work to get all this stuff up and running. Um, this sounds pretty interesting. They're showing uh, a lot of people playing this stuff on phones, you know, pairing a Bluetooth controller to it or using on screen touch, whatever. You're not going to do that. Um, uh, and this, I feel like this could be pretty interesting depending on how they do this. Yeah, I think it could be very interesting. I think, honestly, if I'm completely honest, I don't think they wanted to talk about this. I think the only reason they happen to have talked about this is because Google started talking about theirs. <laughs> yeah. 
because project stream i think there is is yeah google started yeah. talking about it and then around about a week later which is just enough time for them to get market and meetings together and get a, a plan get laid a out. trailer <laughs> yeah around about a week later they start talking about this i think yeah. they were waiting as long as they could to talk about this and then google dropped the bomb so now they have to too yeah it, I, that's pretty clear with them being like here's our server uh technology you know here's Here's Forza Horizon 4 running on a phone. Wink. You know, that that yeah. sort of that sort of stuff. I I think this is really interesting. I, I think like you're saying, we're probably a, a ways away from it. Mm-hmm. I think this is I think this is primarily the play that they're putting into effect now to really take advantage of for the next Xbox platform. Because they're they at E three this year they were very clear saying we're making a traditional console and we're making a streaming only one. Mm-hmm. You get to choose which one you want. Um, so I think this is the co- and I think pairing that with Game Pass, I think very clever. You start that streaming console starts looking very attractive, especially for her parents mm-hmm. to buy this thing, hook it up to the internet, ten bucks a month for Game Pass. You're already paying ten bucks a month for Hulu and Netflix and all that other stuff. What's another ten bucks? And then. Um, your kid can play a whole bunch of stuff. Yeah. Fortnite's free anyway. So 100 plus <laughs> games available now, so... Yep. Yeah, interesting to see where that one's going to turn out. Last news story we have here. Sony has announced Borderlands 2 coming to the PlayStation VR. Um, this was not a game I was expecting to get another announcement for, nevertheless a VR version. I wasn't expecting it, but I'm also not surprised, because it's yeah. Gearbox and 2K as well, if I'm right, have some yeah. market in the Borderlands. Yeah. So, yeah. Honestly, that doesn't surprise me. It's Yeah, I I hope this comes to other platforms after, you know, six months or so, and once the exclusivity is done. Um, I feel like this could be really interesting in VR. They they had this whole big press release where we're like, look, it's not the same exact game. It's solo only, so we're we're changing a whole bunch of skills in the game to make it, you know, you'll be more powerful because you won't have complimentary friends. Yeah. Um, you know, they're obviously working on uh, some of the nausea stuff because you know, Borderlands 2 could move pretty quickly at times. Yep, and um, then at other times it could move real slowly. Yeah. Like the Vita version. Yes. Um, I But I feel like with this art style, I, I feel like that could be really cool in VR. And that could be a cool experience. Yeah. And wasn't it Borderlands that had that weird, like, platform-based shooty VR experience on, like, the Oculus or something, where it was, like, trying to shoot people while you were all on cars and you could hide behind? Well, I don't know. Whatever. No, that just looked a lot like Borderlands. Okay. It was it was like the same aesthetic that someone else same made like a battle then. royale sh- boat game out of. Yes, yeah. yeah, interesting. I, I'm I'm curious to see where that's going to go, but um, I'm also surprised they put Borderlands two and not the pre sequel. I'm not because I guess two's bigger. Two's bigger. It's more popular. Everybody knows two. Two generally it's the last one most people played. Yeah, and general generally speaking, two came out with a much more lording of praise than yeah. pre-sequel did. Pre-sequel That's very fair. much got the why kind right. of treatment. Like, it's still good, but where's Borderlands 3? Yeah. Where's yeah. my Borderlands MMO? Right, exactly. Border Worlds. Why does everybody want MMOs these days? I don't... I, t- I, I, I don't know. I can't say anything because I'm playing Destiny 2, but I don't know. <laughs> All right, let's move on to questions. Uh, Death2K in Discord says, Hey, TVGP overlords, uh, I was recently at an amusement center for a kid's party and noticed not only could kids play Fortnite, but the facility was also streaming a popular Twitch player, Ninja. Uh, once these kids age, aging from 7 to 14 walked by, they would scream Fortnite and begin to do the floss dance. That sounds about right. Mm-hmm. As a father of a six-year-old, I'm always... I am always wondering what video games will be at my son's Mario or Sonic. Games he'll look back with nostalgia. What games do you think this Generation Z's, kids born after 2000, will feel nostalgic for when they grow up? Minecraft, PUBG, Fortnite, or, or will Mario always rule, rule them all? Sorry for the long question. Thank you both for your time and dedication. I don't think Mario will always rule them all. 
if I'm no. honest, if you're talking kids born after the year 2000, then I'm looking at Halo. Yeah. Because I know it's not the pop, most popular thing on the show. I'm a big fan, but I know... It's we, huge, yeah. still. And it hasn't even been doing stellar like, game-wise, but it's still a very recognizable, huge brand. So right. I think Halo's going to be there. Fortnite's going to be there, whether we want it to be or not. And, but I think when all that stuff goes away, especially when Fortnite and PUBG start to decline, Minecraft is always there. Yeah, that's a very good point. I think Minecraft is king of the hill. I, I just... They have like 19 million monthly individual players. Mm-hmm. Like, it, it's just... It's stupid huge. And, yeah. and you it's hear about a one-time like, purchase. You hear about stuff like Roblox and, and all these yep. other things. And, yeah, Fortnite and PUBG and everything else like that. They might come up, explode, be the biggest game on the planet for a week, a month, a year, whatever. Yeah. How long has Minecraft been around? <laughs> oh, God, you know, I actually don't even... Like, Minecraft. What? When was that originally launched? About 2001, 2002, it might have been. This is saying 2011, and that's wrong. Was Minecraft... Maybe, maybe it was 2011 the actual official out-of-beta launch? Minecraft original release date was in 2009, but that's still not right either. Um, I'm looking for, like, the first alpha. 1972. No. <laughs> <laughs> this, this, this Minecraft wiki timeline of events starts with the births of Mojang... Mojang, sorry. Employees and staff. Come on, man. <laughs> that's not Minecraft. That's no. the studio. Uh, first release of the game was May 17th, 2009. That was the first alpha. That's a long time ago, and that thing is... And it got popular right away. Mm Mm-hmm. That thing, I think, is going to live on forever. Like, that's... Yep. I think, honestly, that is the Mario of... Yeah. Probably just slightly younger than me generation. People are playing it on iOS. Mm-hmm. Like they're they're people are playing it wherever they can. And I know that when I know a lot of people are playing Fortnite on iOS, but like when, even when you're a kid, you're probably gonna want to chill with your friends and build some stuff because that's still that's still fun. Yeah, yeah. Minecraft, congratulations, you win game of the forever. Yes, I mean don't, <laughs> everything else is gonna come and go when you look down to it. Like Destiny, yeah. I mean, people will probably look back at Destiny, Halo. Mm-hmm. They will be the Ninja Gaiden uh, and the Me- and the Mega Man of that right. generation. Minecraft will be the Mario of the generation. Yep. Yeah, and in fifteen more years, will be the Minecraft of <laughs> Mario. Will still have games coming out, but yeah, but he will be released purely in Minecraft. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. How long? Uh, Team. T Bomb Rocks asks a couple questions here in Discord. Says, with the rumors of Xbox buying Obsidian, it looks like the future for first party looks strong. I would agree with that. Debatable, but yes. Yeah, we're definitely getting there. Yes. Uh, do you see them working on a new entry in a dormant or existing IP or something completely new? Well, we all want Alpha Protocol. Yeah. Except for uh, my wife who wants New New Vegas. Yeah, and I feel like. With how well Pillars of Eternity did, I feel like you put Obsidian on their dream project and just, like we said, pump them with money and leave them alone. Yeah. Just, what have you guys wanted to make that is marketable? Go make that. This is the new Obsidian game, and it's only available on Xbox. Mm-hmm. I mean, they don't even need to make it only available on Xbox. That's fair. They, they've been putting stuff out on Switch. Yeah, I... In all honesty, I want their dream game to be a new Alpha Protocol because yeah. every single spy game has gone by the wayside now. There is no yeah. more James Bond games because nobody cares to make a licensed game anymore. Splinter and they, Cell, those were so bad. Yeah. Splinter Cell has gone the way of the dinosaur. No and it's an action game now. Yeah. No matter how much I pray for Splinter Cell to come back in all of its forms, it's not yeah. going to. Which... Yeah. I'm going to ruin it for you right now in Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Hashtag spoiler alert. There is, um, the first time you come out of the Animus, there is a night vision goggle set on the side of the room. And the, and Layla says, oh, this looks like third echelon. Maybe even fourth <laughs> echelon. It's like, really? Wait. 
go Great. F yourselves, Ubisoft, for making that reference and not announcing a Great. new game. Horrible teasers. I think the only one that's <clears throat> still holding it together is Hitman, actually. Yeah, Hitman, and that came out of nowhere and took that place. Yeah. It, it was a long time ago. It was Splinter Cell, Siphon Filter, Hitman, yep. Yep. and Bond games, and that was pretty much it. Yeah. And then all of them slowly died off, and then Hitman came back to make a rousing success. A surprise victory. Yes. The most unexpected of the lot of them. <laughs> yeah. I, I, as much as I'd like another Alpha Protocol, I, I would rather them get a couple of games under their belt with Microsoft and then potentially say, all right, we're, we're, we're making another Alpha Protocol something. Yeah. You know, it doesn't even have to be a sequel. It could be dealing with some other characters or something. It, it could be interesting, but... Yeah, I'm. I'm okay. We've waited this long. I can wait a little bit more. Is, is Pillars even out on the consoles? I know two is, I think. But what about the first one? I don't think the f- first one came out. I don't know. It might have. Yeah, I'm not sure. Uh, T. Y. Rock says my second rumor question. Reports have started to surface of an updated Switch, which Nintendo uh, did verify. Do you expect a minor upgrade like the 3DS to 3DS XL or something closer to what Sony Microsoft did with the One and the Pro? It's um, Nintendo. It's going to be small. They never, they yeah. never really do big leaps. If they do same big screen leaps, size but thinner or more battery life or smaller bezel. I don't think they're. <clears throat> I don't think they'll make it bigger, because I think the Switch is at its maximum size already anyway. Yeah. But I don't think they need to do too much. You just need to slap a new on the box and be like, 20% more battery life. and 20% more battery life, 20% more durable, and 15% less weight. Yeah. There you go. Th- those are all good numbers. <clears throat> we'll take them. It plays 100% of Switch games. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> or for some reason, 98%. Yeah. <laughs> knowing knowing how those things go. <clears throat> uh, Death 2K in Discord says, If crossplay becomes standard... Do you think the next generation of consoles will revert to the battle of exclusive games? I think that's all the consoles have been for the longest time anyway at this point. I feel like that's still this generation. Mm-hmm. I, I, to be honest, I'd say that's last generation too. Mm-hmm. Because despite the fact that crossplay should have come into effect last generation, especially yep. on the Xbox 360 and PC front, considering they are basically the same architecture... They did that with one game. Yes, they, they did. They just did it with the worst game they could have done. Yes, they did. <laughs> Shadow Run for anyone listening. Yes. Uh, and then Sony went bonkers in a way that, in, specifically with PlayStation 3, that would mean it would never yeah. be allowed to be cross-play. Yeah. But it should have been standard out the gate. It should be standard, period, now. And even yeah. last gen, when it wasn't, even this gen, when we're slowly getting there, it's always been about the exclusives. Always. Microsoft yeah. had some incredible ones last generation. Sony came hard out late out the gate to yeah. drop some of their own. But at this point, it feels like we're inverting the cycle where Microsoft's exclusives feel a little bit old and long in the tooth now. Mm-hmm. But you look at Sony's <clears throat> yeah. and they are very much getting there quick because Last of Us might be an amazing game. I don't care about Last of Us 2. I don't yeah. care about Uncharted 6. I don't care yeah. about... The guy who was the apprentice in Star Wars: The Force Awakens surviving another zombie apocalypse again. <laughs> That's so good. I know him as that guy and Darkseid from Smallville. Was that game called Days Gone? Yes, that's what it's called. Yeah, I don't. I, I, another zombie game is something I am so disinterested in. Every time I see it, I'm like, all right, this is gonna be the trailer where they sell me on it, and it's like it's it's different. Suddenly, it's different from any other zombie game, mm-hmm. and. Next thing you know, there's 300 zombies pouring out of a, it, a barn. It feels like Uncharted with zombies. Yep. In a very similar... Well, correction. It feels like Uncharted with zombies in a World War Z way. Whereas yeah. Last of Us feels like Uncharted with zombies in the Walking Dead kind of way. It's two right. Uncharted games with zombies. Right. Yeah. I don't know. I'm, Hopefully Crackdown I'm, 3 is good, though. I'm getting ready for the hate on that, by the way, because I know I have received issue for basically calling Sony exclusives Uncharted games with blank before. Yeah, that's all right. Everyone's everyone's upset about somebody's taste. So. Mm-hmm. Some, of the, they, some of their exclusives are fantastic, yeah. but 
I mean, God of War and Spider-Man this generation alone are way yep. up there on my Game of the Year list. I just don't care about the Uncharted series. No, yeah, I, I have really liked the couple I've played, but I struggle to finish those because all the enemies are bullet sponges. I, I just, it's not... When I shoot a dude four times in the head on normal difficulty, I sort of expect them to perish. Boy, you should never play The Division. Yeah, well, that's different. To me, th- that's more like that's more like Destiny. You know, those are Diablo online loot you know, games, yeah. L- yeah, loot-based shooters. Um, those to me, yeah, I don't want to plug a giant boss in the in the dome for, you know, a minute. I'm telling you as well, by the way, in The Division, there's nothing quite as satisfying as when you hit a headshot. It does this little, little, little tink noise. And oh, when that's you- so good. And when you're using an LMG and you hit a dude in the head over and over and over again for about 30 seconds, it's just so good. So man, so good. I really want the Division Two to be good, but I don't really like where they're going story-wise with it. Like I haven't liked the first couple of trailers. I haven't even been looking at it. Gameplay-wise, you're putting in raids, you're putting in free DLC, you're putting in more content. All right, yeah, like that's. We're going to do it right the second time. All right. But a lot of the, like, DC taken over by terrorists, but they're not really terrorists. It's not. Dude, that doesn't do anything. Play for Far me. Cry 5. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Surely yeah. you know better than that by now. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Jamal Koss and Discord asks, are there any genre of games which you n- never actually enjoyed playing, but every time a new one comes out, you get hyped anyway and buy them uh, only to discover you still don't enjoy them? For me, it's survival horror games like Resident Evil or Evil Within. Those look so gorgeous and fun, but I hate those illogical puzzle segments so much I just can't play more than an hour before turning it off and never touching them again. And beat em ups. Specifically one-on-one fighting games kind of games. Yeah. Every time I get sucked into the hype, and uh, every time I buy them new, and then I just I stop myself after Mortal Kombat X, I think it was. So the, mm, right. the newest Mortal Kombat, I stop myself at that point, and I've done a good job of of holding off on it. But right, it's so tempting sometimes. But then I know I will, I'll do the same thing I did with my Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom Three, you know, and Mortal Kombat X. I will play it by myself mostly. I will get bored of it. I will try and jump <laughs> About online. Twenty hours. I will get stumped, and then I'll be done. Yeah. Man, what... I'm trying to think of games that I'm interested in that I keep getting burned by. <sighs> multiplayer I, games. Like, what's that? <laughs> multiplayer games. Anything that's got a multiplayer focus. I'm just like, oh, that'd be so cool. I can play with everybody. Wait, I'm a grown-up who has no time. No, right. I can't. Yeah. I... I, I keep thinking, like, oh, maybe at once in a while there's a sports game I, I'm excited about, but that doesn't ever really happen. Maybe my answer is open world games. Yes. <laughs> so a lot of them I'll pick up, like, like the first Red Dead. You know, people keep asking me, are you buying a Red Dead 2? No. Because I keep getting bitten by <laughs> especially rock star open world games where... I get halfway through the story and I go like, oh my god, this is so boring and it controls terribly. And the story is interesting enough, but like now I have to go do pizza delivery to go do something else that I want to do. I'm done. I'm just, I'm not. Mm Mm-hmm. Rockstar open world games often don't play well. I'm not I'm not. Yeah. No, I like for people that like to play games. (laughs) (laughs) Red Dead Redemption is a bad playing game. That game controlled poorly. I will disagree with you, but respect your opinion. <sighs> there are definitely I don't, issues with it. Compared yeah. to Grand Theft Auto 4, that was a huge step up. Sure. Grand Theft Auto 4, I think that had a lot of problems driving, but the rest of it was okay. Oh, dude, Walking and shooting functioned. That didn't function in Red Dead Redemption. I definitely disagree with that one. I thought I was going to be the one to get the heat this episode. I think it's going to be you. (laughs) Nothing in Red Dead except for the story and the music was successful. Well, I'd like to have a breakdown discussion of this some uh, some day. (laughs) Now now people know why I don't want to pick up Red Dead Dead Redemption 2. Because it's going to be the same thing, looking better, and it sure looks like they're going to have the same stupid shooting system again. 
Oh, Hooray. I completely understand if it's not for you, and I'm fine yeah. with that. I ain't got yeah. any issues at all. Like Crackdown. Crackdown is not for everybody. No, yeah. It's only for sane people. <laughs> it's Everyone. only for people that want to blow everything up. Yes, and have fun. <laughs> yeah. I'm, st- I, you know, I, I'm still excited for for Crackdown Three. I'm, I'm bracing myself to be let down by something fundamental in the game. Oh, yeah. After such a long time, because I feel like it's going to be a game that is probably fun to play and it's probably good but something in it is probably going to feel very old and oh, I just, I, yeah 100%. i just don't know what it's it's gonna have the same thing that red dead will have for you whereas something will feel wrong with it and that's i'll be honest i i'm okay with that because i just love crack now so i'll be in I, my my knee jerk on crackdown is i'm really worried that there's going to be something in that i'm worried that they're going to try and do more storyline stuff you don't and need to. There's going to be something in there that's objectionable after this long amount of time, but they don't lean into it like Saints Row does, where it's like, okay, well, sure, I just dropped a kick, drop kicked a baby into a volcano, but it's Saints Row, whatever. Yeah, I'm worried Crackdown Three is going to do something like that and be like, oh, that's that's not okay now. It's a bit like like watching the Blues Brothers in 2018, (laughs) right? Where it's like. Ooh, you're a product of its time, and that's fine. Some of this is not cool anymore. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, that's that's sort of what I'm I'm beginning to be worried about because it's gonna be fine. You're gonna blow a bunch of stuff up, and you throw rubber ducks at buses and blow them up, and that's fine. But like, I, I don't I don't know. I'm 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 worried about it, but I, I'm still there day one. We answered the question in that game alone, Crackdown. We will yeah. buy it day one. We will yeah. be there day one. It's not going to work out the way we want it to. No. I'm, I will be happy if Crackdown 3 comes out Yeah. at this point. I, I, I'm happy. It will probably run fine. It'll have a fun open world. The toy box update will come out, and that will be when most people will need to start the game. And mm-hmm. it will be on our game of the year for that yep. year. Not number one, probably. Probably. I'd like no. to be proven wrong, though. Yeah. I'd love to come to the this you know this time 2019 and be like boy 2019 has been a great year. Something, Nothing can be Crackdown three though. Yeah, what's gonna <laughs> what's gonna touch Crackdown three? That is what right. I'm hoping. The answer will be is can I slip it in as number ten? That's right. that's gonna yeah. be the reality of the situation. My top honorable mention: Crackdown three. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, thanks everyone for your questions. We really appreciate it. If you'd like to visit us, you can do so at tvgp.tv all the places to find and follow us on the right hand side of the page don't forget to uh, become a patron if you're not one already patreon.com slash e1m1 the ones are numbers get all the cool behind the scenes stuff early access to uh, we rogue like it episodes the first one is coming out for patrons this Wednesday oh DNF without any delays Right, yeah, no uh, two-month delay for... Three-month delay for ODNF, two-month delay for Dynamic Soundtrack. Get a whole bunch of stuff. Get Outcast, which I'm giggling at while I'm editing. Those have been those have been uh, a pretty good uh, week after week. A couple weeks ago, did a... Um, had a, a real behind-the-scenes peek from a pre-pre-pre-pre-show uh, where I'm flipping through some old TVGP notebooks from years past. So that was a... That was a good listen. And Moonpeer was building a chair at the same time. <laughs> yeah. Um, this month's uh, Game Club game with one week left on 2064 Read Only Memories. It's pretty great. You should give it a shot. And it's only $20.64, <laughs> as we found out today. <laughs> uh, find and follow us on uh, all the live streaming services. They'll let you know when we go live. We'll see you all next week. Bye. I've been yawning nonstop this episode. I can't stop. I'm so I know. Tired. I keep trying to not yawn when you yawn. I know. Like, the, the whole, ah, the whole... there's a swear. Thank you. <laughs> Write that down, please. I'll get it. It Damn is one forty-eight thirty. Star F word. Damn it. One forty-eight thirty. Yeah, just. It's so rude to to to. Uh, Yawn into a microphone too. Oh yeah! Like you don't burp, you don't yawn, you don't eat chips. You make like, <laughs> yeah. Uh, made me laugh actually because the Xbox Avatar thing came up for everybody, 
while I was, oh, make, while I was making my new avatar, it yawned, and I was like, I hate you so much. And I was like, surely <laughs> so avatar is not going to make me yawn. It did. Oh. <laughs> I was so annoyed. It's too lifelike. Yes. All right, hit me with your titles. Uh, have you met yourself? <laughs> Aggressively yelling about microtransactions. <laughs> Just getting smashed. Into the mind of a sociopath. Me, Alexandrios, big and strong. <laughs> Assassin's Creed Odyssey abridged. Boston is dumb. Boston got good. And 1975. No. <laughs> I have the PT. So far, really cool. Sharky Revenge. Full set of oranges. <laughs> Climb or drive. <coughs> and have you met yourself? <laughs> full set of oranges <coughs> when you said that I just imagined you like carting around this arm full of oranges yeah it does give the impression of juggling a bunch of oranges around yeah oh I'm torn between that and um, me Alexandrios big and strong just cause it's so bad yeah. dude it's so so bad yeah I like I think full set of oranges is a punchier title oh yeah I'm gonna circle that one Whoop. All right, starting in three, two, one. This is That Video Game Podcast, episode 573 for October 15th, 2018. Full set of oranges. Gear and fruit, both good for your health. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much, everyone, for watching and listening. See you next uh, week. Bye. See you, everyone. And we're done recording. <laughs>